and welcome back. We have been joined on the couch for our first and extended conversation this morning by Dr. Susan Cassidy. She's the, uh, the country representative for UNICEF and CEO Judith Alpuche from the Ministry of Human Development. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks the topic coming. this morning is community-based partnership for violence prevention. Yes. Can you guys uh, start us off with what's going on on your respective ends in, uh, in terms of this particular topic? Sure, <laughs> sure. I'm happy to kick off and good morning. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for having us. Um, I think just to say what we um, recognize uh, is that over the last couple of months especially, we've seen constant reminders of the importance of engaging with communities at the community level to make sure that we create um, an environment that is more protective um, and supportive of our children. We've seen incidents of violence that have been targeted at children or incidents of violence in which that have affected children mm -hmm. um, directly on the streets, in their homes. And at UNICEF, um, reflecting at all the great work that we've been doing over the years um, with the government of Belize and with other partners, we have identified successes in terms of contributions to evidence, to strengthen policies, national programs, um, and to work to strengthen civil society organizations so that they can support community level action. But we recognize an opportunity that we need to respond to right now collectively, and that is um, the opportunity to really engage quite directly and to, to motivate and leverage the incredible resource that we have in communities themselves to partner with government, to partner with institutions, to identify solutions, that address the problems that they're facing. And that's what um, this partnership that we are, um, we're trying to, to support is about um, engaging that, that resource um, that is the communities around Belize um, so that we can work with them to identify what is it that is driving, enabling, and, um, and, and cultivating a tolerance or continuance of violence, and what can we at the community do to respond? Who do we have that can mentor? Who do we have that can support grieving, bereaved families? Who do we have that can support vulnerable families in the community? What can we do to create spaces in our community that are protective, that are safe, individually as community members, and then to support this through organized um, engagement between the communities and established institutions of civil society, and link them to government programs so that we can get better impact from the investments in these programs and the capacities that we've spent a lot of time um, growing. Is, is this a shift um, from, is this a new approach, Judith, in dealing with the problem? Because it appeared in the past that the approach was more so, what can the, um, the institutions do? to get the community's uh, results. This seems to be a paradigm shift to where can we empower the, the community to actually help themselves. I don't think it's a paradigm shift. Really, it's a realization of a, of a methodology that we've wanted to, to employ, but perhaps not having the resources. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've engaged um, NGOs from, and I'm talking from the government perspective, um, engage NGOs, engage maybe m more community-based organizations. But what this partnership with UNICEF really allows is really an envelope of, of support, technical support and mm -hmm. funding for real grassroots organizations or real or persons, if you will, to be, who, who have good ideas, who have good skills, etc., to really um, contribute. To, to the common good, to really moving these issues along, really addressing the, the re, all the multiple facets that drive violence. Um, we talk a lot about this in terms of, you know, uh, government cannot do it alone, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a definite. Um, and so it's really beyond NGOs and, and, and um, organized bodies like that, if you will, and really tapping into I think we have incredible resources in communities and people mm. with good ideas. Yeah. So how do we support them and help them and to organize and to, you know, even if they have just the kernel of an idea to help to articulate mm. and flesh that out um, and, and really to be able to deliver 
in their communities. And this is not just Belize City, this, mm -hmm. is, this is nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, so really looking at those factors, really um, pushing towards changing norms and behaviors and, and the way people interface within their communities. Mm -hmm. So it's not a paradigm shift, it's really, as I said, a realization of methodology that we've wanted to, to ensure for a long time. You'll forgive me if I'm, if I'm putting this out there. Mm -hmm. It's just a thought that, that's weighing on my mind. You mentioned the grassroots movement, mm -hmm. right? And being able to tap into those resources and being able to provide the kind of support that they would need. So it, it would seem as though it's more like from a ground up approach. I think of certain community-based movements, for instance, the, the young man with the Days of Healing, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Sticks. Sticks, right? I don't know that perhaps our society, the business community, or perhaps the various government departments take such an initiative seriously. When I look at the idea of this young man trying to bring all of these grieving and bereaved families together to, to bring some of the victims of crime and violence together and try to create a peace movement. Mm. And the fact that on occasions I've heard him make an appeal to various organizations and not necessarily being able to get the kind of support that perhaps he would want in terms of, you know, effectively carrying through his plans or whatsoever. How does any other grassroots organization get the full support from the NGO community, from the government, and any other agencies that would be able to provide either technical assistance or funding for such an initiative? If I could jump in, um, just over a week ago, um, we at UNICEF issued um, what we called an innovation challenge. We issued a call um, to community or grassroots based organizations or individuals exactly like the program Days of Healing that you've, um, that you've described. Because we recognize that there is a challenge for many grassroots organizations in accessing resources to, uh, to, com to conduct the kind of work that, they, um, that they've tried to, to design and develop. And, and there's a gap between grassroots organizations and their capacities and established civil society organizations. Yeah. So the call that we issued, the announcement that we issued, um, invited grassroots organizations or individuals with ideas um, to support response at the community level um, to come forward with these suggestions, submit these suggestions in any one or more um, of five areas. First, um, it was things that they can do to um, support mobilization of the community to address social norms that, um, that, that promote or make um, establish a tolerance for violence. So um, we're looking for ideas that, that may challenge that at the community level. And by community, I mean in a neighborhood or in a block, really where you live, things that you can do and mobilize people, resources in your community to join hands with you to try and address the issue of social norms. The second was um, ideas around how to effectively bring community members together to develop action plans that can, one, identify the issues that contribute to violence in your neighborhood and solutions to these. That, um, and this action plan would be um, something that you can implement with members of your community. The third was um, initiatives that may support grieving families and support um, and provide psychosocial support to community members. We've seen simple things like people um, coming together to prepare meals for grieving families or families um, who are otherwise um, vulnerable. The fourth um, is work to support families with very young children, families that are struggling and that have very, very young children, um, to promote um, from a very early age uh, attitudes that are, uh, that are uh, about resolving com conflict peacefully. Um, and then the, four, the fifth one is working with teenagers, working with teenagers to, to support them to learn about conflict resolution, violence prevention through play, through art, through music. So we've invited grassroots organizations to present these ideas, what, what we will do f further 
is select the best ideas that come up from across Belize and link these grassroots organizations to establish civil society, to, to bridge the gap yeah. in terms of capacity to, through mentorship to ensure that these grassroots organizations can learn from established civil society how to um, build your budgets, how to advocate, how to document, how to monitor, and how to sustain. Because ultimately what we want to see is these community initiatives really being sustained over time. Then the other thing we want to do is to link the different grassroots organizations together to learn together so that we can accelerate the, the learning and the change that we can cultivate through this, this collaboration with communities through that joint conversation by similar minded um, organizations. Um, so that's what the call is. The yeah. deadline is the 13th of April. Yeah. Um, and it is targeting exactly the kind of, of grassroots level organization to tackle any of those five ideas. And the purpose is ultimately to, um, to expand those lessons and to support improvement rapidly in our own um, programs supported by government at a national scale to achieve scale and sustainability. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you, you dealt with that aspect because I was wondering, when you look at a lot of these grassroots based initiatives, like Stixbury, like Mr. Stump, mm -hmm. like Dara. Um, a lot of times, they don't have the infrastructure that right. the Human um, Services mm -hmm. Department would have. They don't have an accountant. They That's don't have right. a working plan. That's right. um, but there's another aspect of it, too, which is that UNICEF, I know, is very deal with accountability. Yeah. That there's a certain form you have to come in with. Yeah. Is there any support for persons who have the idea? So I just have a, a three sentence in my head. Mm -hmm. I, I want to come in and I want to uh, you know, uh, have a daycare center. Mm -hmm. uh, I have nothing else. Mm -hmm. Can I come in and voice that in three paragraphs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And will you then help me to develop that? Mm -hmm. yeah. That is precisely what, what is intended. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and what the partnership, it, it goes to the heart of what you're seeing, mm -hmm. and you're seeing as well, in terms of, as Susan said, how do we really help to, to provide that technical support mm -hmm. um, that people need. Because indeed, it's, it's just an idea that is yeah. floating around in, in your head. How do we help you to, to concretize that mm -hmm. um, and, and to put that into a plan of action mm -hmm. um, and, and really build capacity? I think I, I'm very excited about this because it is, you know, we've been talking about it, we've identified the need, and now we actually have the, the funding and the technical support um, from, from UNICEF to be able to to provide this level of support that's needed. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully, you know, the learning is also the most important part to my mind because it goes to the heart of sustainability. So the skills that you will, that these people that with these, these organizations that are involved, the skills that, that we hopefully will transmit through the more um, established organizations who know how to, you know, keep your invoice or mm. that sort of thing so you can account to the funders, which is oftentimes um, the barrier to mm -hmm. people accessing funds yeah. because people yeah. want to know, yes, you have a good idea and you have a good heart, mm -hmm. but how, how do I know that my money is well spent or how can you, you know, account for the money? Mm -hmm. So this is the idea of build capacity in, in that way as well just just come in with your ideas mm -hmm. and you know so and and oftentimes you you talk about um teams and and people play different roles mm -hmm. you know so you 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 have this person in the community who has a good heart who can who will work hard who will whatever but is not articulate enough to to be filling out a form or mm -hmm. something so so yeah. this is the, the level of support that we're looking at also just come with your ideas mm -hmm. um i know unicef has tried to simplify the form mm -hmm. and we've had this discussion about well it might not be simple enough no. but no. that should not be a barrier mm -hmm. you know that should not be a barrier um and that's the whole idea as i mm -hmm. said you know um it's it's incredible as you as you talk to people as you listen to people we were sitting side by side for instance at the women's awards mm -hmm. and we're just awed mm -hmm. by just how much resources we have um, in our country people toiling away doing their little thing mm -hmm. um, to 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 just towards the common good mm -hmm. or just to uplift themselves and their families mm -hmm. very quietly in mm -hmm. their little corner of the world in their little corner of Belize mm -hmm. um, and this is the these are the types of people that we're hoping mm -hmm. um, to be able to tap into and mm -hmm. to to mobilize mm -hmm. because if the changes are going to happen 
it, it really needs to happen at that community neighborhood mm -hmm. level, you know, um, because in as much as government or civil society, more organized NGOs try to provide services, it's really the people in the communities interfacing day in, day out with, with their own, with the children that they, they have seen born and are growing up. Mm -hmm. um, these are the people who can make the difference. Mm -hmm. I, I really do believe that. And um, I'm, I'm hoping then that we can <coughs> look at, okay, so how can we plug these people into the, to the broader network or not in not in a controlling way, mm -hmm. but in terms of, of counting them towards what we're trying to to accomplish in terms of ensuring peace in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. there, there's a certain amount of irreconcilability though mm -hmm. between big organizations like UNICEF, like the Ministry of Human uh, Development, mm -hmm. and somebody who, of their own heart, mm -hmm. of their own resources, on some heroes put these programs together because I know for a fact that Mr. Stamp, for example, he's not looking at any structure. Mm -hmm. um, how do you factor in that? It takes a certain personality to do these community-based initiatives, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is to my mind completely opposite from the structured, I go into work from eight to five, I have a budget, mm -hmm. you know, and I get it done. Is there going to be any support in terms of um, getting out of that mentality that it's my thing, I do it at nine today if I want, tomorrow I don't do it if I don't want, I mm. go and beg for stuff here. How do you change the psychology of the kind of person who would be interested in these community-based projects? Mm. I'm not sure that we are trying to change, change the psychology of any individual. I think what we're trying to do is to reach out to those individuals who really have ideas that they are um, that they are committed to trying to implement and uh, just looking as, as Judith was saying for a little more additional support to make it work to make it last um, so and, and Judith also she already mentioned that we we've, we've simplified a form that describes what it is that we're we're looking for but we what we're looking for is for partnerships to begin right now um, so everyone lives in a community. You know the teachers in your community. You know whether you have um, a, a super mobilizer, somebody who is trusted just implicitly and on a regular basis. These are the people that we're hoping will come together um, because somebody who has an idea is reaching out to them and saying, why don't we just, why don't we just respond to this? And then what we're hoping to do is to make sure that we link these grassroots teams, organizations or groups um, with other organizations who already work with a particular kind of structure, we're not trying to change people into institutions. Right. We're really just trying to leverage the innovative, creative, committed ideas and link them with established institutions to support them um, and fill, as I said, to bridge the gap between the way they organize um, so that they can access resources that they're not that's, currently That's a very polite way, however, to see that you're institutionalizing them. You, you, give, yeah. you, you do give a budget, mm -hmm. there has to be a budget, there has mm -hmm. to be accountability. Mm -hmm. And there's a link mm -hmm. between them and an established institution. Yes, there is. That level of control, and, and I think that where, where I'm trying to go mm -hmm. is that my understanding of Belizean culture, mm -hmm. we are, we don't have that level of discipline. And we don't have that level of support that you're looking for. Normally, it's one person, whether that's Mr. Mazinaris deciding, you know what, I believe in Creole culture and I'm going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Or whether or not it is um, Sharon Matola deciding, we need a zoo, I'm going to get it done. Mm -hmm. That level of uh, sharing mm -hmm. and that level of cooperation mm -hmm. and even that level of um, abundance of ideas, mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen it being in the NGO community, mm -hmm. particularly when you're dealing with people uh, who are willing mm -hmm. to take on these initiatives. It's a very small pool of people you're dealing with. Mm. And that pool of people have a different psychology. They, they're, not, they're, they're not looking, sorry, let me not speak for them. But there's a difficulty in reaching out. They don't know how to. Mm. They know that the picture in the past has been that I have to get this done. Mm. So that's why I asked about the psychology, because that's simply not the way I have experienced. Mm -hmm. let, me try to, <laughs> let me try to see if I can perhaps use an analogy or mm -hmm. an example to further illustrate what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If I look at Dara's feeding program, for, mm -hmm. for example, 
This program has been in existence for a number of years. Mm -hmm. We're all familiar with it. He has been um, nationally recognized mm -hmm. for this, this initiative of his. Mm -hmm. If he were to see a venture from just having a feeding program where these 12 or 13 uh, kids come at midday to say, well, you know what? Let me try to see if I can provide after school either counseling or tutoring for them. But he would perhaps need some kind of funds to be able to pay a teacher or pay a counselor to come in. But he brings this idea to you that, you know what, I want to expand this program, this, out, this community outreach. You're saying essentially that through this particular program, he would be able to fill out that form, bring the, the, the idea and the application to you guys, and you would be able to assist? Is that, I'm trying to understand. The dynamics there. Yeah, in layman, as, as layman Mechanics. as it gets, mm -hmm. how that works. Mm -hmm. So exactly, we're looking for, for programs to, to present mm -hmm. exactly how they would pull together ideas, mm -hmm. but with the objective of contributing to any one of those five areas mm -hmm. that I talked about, yeah. either social norm change mm -hmm. or support to vulnerable families mm -hmm. or organizing communities to plan together or working with teenagers mm -hmm. um, through art. So that's the kind of thing we're looking to see come together, yeah. but that would be implemented by community members themselves in their mm -hmm. communities. Um, so I think maybe to extend, to extend the, the um, response to the question that you had asked, mm -hmm. We know that we will n probably not get an, you know, we may not get an overwhelming flood mm -hmm. of responses. Yeah. But, it's just but t you, you know, change starts with a few yeah. committed people, Absolutely. and that's what we're looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely. We're looking for those few who are ready, who have good ideas, and who are willing to commit. Um, and the way that they'll demonstrate that commitment is by presenting proposals that, said, that il illustrate how they have leveraged different resources from around them in the community to prepare their idea and and they're going to be invited to come and present that idea and tell us who they'll work with in the community what they're going to do how it links to any one of those five areas that we listed and ultimately how it's going to contribute towards preventing violence and supporting vulnerable families in their community and they have to um, to confirm their commitment to work with um, established civil society organizations and UNICEF and other partners for purposes of mentorship and growth, mm -hmm. for purposes of, um, of documentation and sharing of these lessons so that we can contribute to change at scale and change that's sustained through national programs and investments um, through the government's programs. And I think that there are more people than, than you think mm -hmm. because people are, in, as I said, we, we encounter people, I'm always surprised. Uh, you just encounter people doing their own thing very, very quietly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have examples. You just talked about Dara and this young man. And um, I always remember <laughs> Herbert Wilshire, mm -hmm. um, my neighbors and me. Mm -hmm. And that was just him just organizing. He won a, uh, this was a couple years ago, he, through UNICEF, he won an award. Um, from San Marino, the country of San Marino. I had to go look on the <laughs> map to see. But you know, I think we have more people, and, and so it's really, and maybe some people will not want to come forward, but it, it will, I, you know, when, when there is success, just one or two or three people, mm -hmm. people will sit up and say, oh, I could do that in my community, or I could mm -hmm. do so and so. So, so you have to start somewhere. Um, and, and I know it's maybe a concept that people are not used to mm -hmm. um, as, you, as, you're, as you're articulating, but I think that there will be some brave souls that will come forward. Um, I've already seen like on Facebook some of the, some of the discussion, you know, yeah. um, people tagging other people to say, you know, and I think it, it also provides a space. There are many of us who may not be living in the at-risk neighborhoods or mm -hmm. communities, mm -hmm. but want to contribute, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And so this is a space, this is an opportunity, and you have like-minded people mm -hmm. that, that you could mobilize, you know, maybe a group of professionals or, or so forth that want to do something in their community and, and are not quite sure how to apply their skills. So mm -hmm. I think we have more people than you. Is there any consideration given to the fact that some of these grassroots initiatives are short-lived like yeah. <laughs> you, you have I can think off the top of my mind you had Belizeans for Justice at one point mm -hmm. it rallied all these 
these mm -hmm. grieving mothers, but it just died a natural death. That's why the linkages are so important. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the support um, and, and to help people to build capacity, etc., mm -hmm. um, to, to, to look at sustainability factors mm -hmm. and so forth. Because a lot of times, you know, there's this burst of energy, but mm -hmm. because people mm -hmm. may not have all the, the skills or are not linked into supportive networks, frameworks that are more organized, that it, you know, you kind of run out of steam and energy, mm -hmm. ideas, resources. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea is to really look at those. Um, try to address those factors mm -hmm. that often um, prevent or, or are barriers mm -hmm. to these excellent ideas and excellent initiatives sustaining themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, think, I think any initiative is important to start off with the way people think. And, mm -hmm. You know, in Belize we have a taco stand mentality. What is that? Taco stand mentality is that one person puts up a taco stand and nobody opens an uh, orange juice stand. Everybody mm -hmm. starts to sell tacos. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that's why I, I'm, again, you know, maybe trying to speak indirectly to the persons who are listening mm -hmm. to say, listen, this is an opportunity for you to come up with a new idea, mm -hmm. um, something that you've had on your heart for a while. My concern was more um, in terms of, if I were to play devil's advocate, to say that a lot of these initiatives already somehow exist. Mm -hmm from an institutional standpoint. So if we're talking about somebody who wants to deal with grieving mothers, then human services surely has counselors there. Or if we're dealing with crime, there's the police who have um, community um, policing. If we're dealing with whatever there is, um, there is an institutionalized, established version of it. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that those institutions are underperforming? or that the strategies that they have been using mm -hmm. for these very same initiatives have not been successful. I don't want to use the word failing. Mm -hmm. And so now we're passing the buck to the community and saying, no, you, no. since we as an institution have failed, we want you to come up with ideas. You like to play devil's advocate. Yes, ma'am. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. There's so many things. That's why we're here. Yes, you see. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. No, definitely not. Um, this is not passing the buck. This mm -hmm. is about creating spaces for everybody to participate. Mm -hmm. Because issues that fuel violence, mm -hmm. are, it's so multi-pronged and multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And indeed, there are institutions working, but we don't have the resources for the amount of coverage, for instance, or the intensity of the work. You know, um, right now, for instance, human development um, through the com uh, CYDP, we're dealing with 80 at-risk um, children, children who are either um, involved in, in gang-related families or are at risk. But there are many other children on the edges, right? So it's, if you look at it, if you're going to address this thing from the prevention first level prevention, second level prevention to intervention. A lot of, of, of the resources that we do have are invested in the intervention pieces and even the prevention pieces. But we, we need a lot more coverage for what we're doing. Um, so if everybody sets up the proverbial taco stand all over this country <laughs> as it comes to, to um, dealing with norms for violence prevention, I would be the happiest woman in Belize wow. because Absolutely. we actually need to saturate Absolutely. You know, it's it's this is about this is about behavior change. This is about shifting of think. paradigms yes. and thinking <laughs> and norms. So it is intense work. Yeah. So you have to mobilize the community mm -hmm. to not to pass the buck, but to complement and to dig deeper. Um, to get to the levels where the institutions might not be able to, to get, to literally, you know, uh, because the institutions come with their own um, coloring, you know, um, while community um, level persons have um, the advantage of being known in their community, they go in and out of households, they, you know, there, there may be more trust. All that sort of thing. Um, and they're there. Mm -hmm. They're stationed there in their communities, day in, day out, you know, seeing things. Um, and I'm excited on, on the level of the, the, the part about learning, too, because the institutions can learn, mm -hmm. you know, because 
people at community level provide a perspective yeah. that we are a POV that we might not be be getting be and from point, point of view oh. sorry and <laughs> data data what what we call evidence-based yeah. practice to, to, to inform your evidence-based practice to shift your methodologies that you're talking about mm -hmm. no so um, it's not about we have failed or whatever I think there are a lot of successful programs mm. Um, happening we need to scale up we need to intensify we need to drill down deeper and this is what this kind of initiative mm -hmm. does in terms of it's support really in terms of support um, because this is a huge task and it mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm rooting for it mm -hmm. tremendously because if it does happen um, I think that it would radicalize mm -hmm. uh, what's happening mm -hmm. because it brings ownership yeah mm -hmm. in reflection to the the intensity of that task and the amount of energy, um, infrastructural energy it will take to change it. What is there in terms of, is there somebody at um, the Ministry of Human Development, have you increased staff to deal specifically with this? Is there somebody from uh, UNICEF that has increased staff to specifically deal with this program getting off the ground? What is the structural support from the institutions, from UNICEF, from um, MHD? Mm -hmm. to assist this program to get off the ground. Yeah, um, so fortunately, UNICEF um, already has a long-standing agreement with not just the Ministry of Human Development, but the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Local Government, um, and with multiple civil society organizations whose responsibility it is through our agreements, but also whose, whose commitment um, is on their own to support exactly this kind of work. So really, as um, as Judith was saying earlier, this is reinforcing and building on what we have in place. Our program at UNICEF um, is committed to supporting the, um, the, the oversight the, from the selection process through to the follow through, the, um, the monitoring and um, linking up of the, um, the civil society organizations that, um, that will support the grassroots organizations. And we'll work with um, with the Ministry of Human Development and others to make sure that we continue to mobilize. It's not going to be, um, I mean, over the last couple of, of weeks, I've had the opportunity to speak with multiple people who are really, really keen to support this, not only in government, um, but for example, um, the OAS, the um, Embassy of Mexico, the Embassy of Cuba, Cuba. Um, and the, the British High Commission, so many others, all of whom are supporting different programs in communities across the country. And I think, back to what you're saying, if we can excite, inform, engage, and excite communities everywhere to be aware of what they can do and how they can benefit from participating in this kind of um, in initiative to gain support through funding, through networking, through mentorship, documentation to support scale, I think that we really could achieve a huge change from this. Um, and I did want to answer your previous question about whether we're doing this because we've failed. And it's hard to, to, um, to add to what CEO Fushia has said, but we can't achieve the successes, um, it, whether through violence prevention or just development um, across the country without the community engagement, right. without Absolutely. the community meeting right. all of these institutional programs halfway. Right. We just can't do it because there has to be that partnership in order to get um, information, ideas, and resources um, from the communities fully, um, fully engaged in the business of, of responding to the, cha the Let challenges. Let me segue for a bit here. Since we have CEO Al Pucha on the call with us this morning, the issue of crime and violence that, has, that continues to plague mm -hmm. Belize, particularly Belize City, We've seen the response from the government in respect of putting more boots on the ground through the police department and what have you. But we've long come to understand that what we're facing is a social problem. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the worst social problems uh, <laughs> one can think of. Mm. What was or what is the position and the response from the Ministry of Human Development and Social Transformation uh, in the wake of what has been taking place in Belize City recently? 
Um, we have programs that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like we woke up with all this. And mm -hmm. um, but as I said, it's 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 really so. Let me start. Um, from the beginning, we have invested quite a bit of of energy, and the government has put in a lot of resources over the years in completely um, revamping our social safety net programs, because it's really about, you know, it's Maslow, it's really mm -hmm. about how do you help families to meet their basic needs in mm -hmm. as much as possible. So, you know, introducing things like the Boost program, uh, which is a conditional cash transfer program. It's something that, it's, a, it's these programs throughout the world have shown that they have um, a good impact on, on a positive impact on, on reducing poverty. And we're seeing some green shoots in Belize in terms of green shoots. Um, having What's that? Uh, meaning successes. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> what it is, it, it's uh, contrary to what people believe, it's not a handout. Mm -hmm. It is a social contract between the government and poor families that say, we will give you this cash transfer um, and you will then ensure that your children attend school 85% of the time, mm -hmm. that they have all of their immunizations according to the Ministry of Health um, schedule, that if you become pregnant, that you attend um, within your first um, trimester, mm -hmm. that you attend um, antenatal clinics. Um, and the, the conditionality that we, we, we check on though is the school attendance yeah. in terms of ensuring that, that children go to school. And if you don't go, then we cut the benefit. Um, we don't cut it just like that. We send out, us, we send out social workers to figure out what's going on, okay. what's the barrier. Because this year, our last academic year, we saw 169 students countrywide graduating. Um, and uh, contrary to what is said, it is actually we determine eligibility through a proxy means test, mm -hmm. which is a, it's, a, it's a mathematical algorithm. So nobody sits down and says, oh, well, you and, mm -hmm. and it's people do a questionnaire, it's run through this algorithm, and at the end you get a score and whether or not. Um, mm -hmm. So that's available that we've been deploying. The food pantry program, mm -hmm. which looks at the working poor. So this is not necessarily for the same level, mm -hmm. but for working poor people. Um, so you get a basket of goods um, that's, now with inflation, it's around $32 on the market. Mm -hmm. You pay $12 to get that. And it's basic, it's balanced, has in fruits and vegetables, et cetera, and, and your staples. Um, apart from that, we um, introduced as a pilot with the help of UNICEF and, and the OAS, Boost Plus. Okay. So what we're trying to do now that families have this cash transfer and, and we've, we are doing it with, it's still ongoing, so 400 families who are Boost recipients in Belize City. Um, and we work with them in, in trying to move them to a higher level of functioning. So. We sit with them, we talk about, okay, so what are your family plans? How can we ensure that, you know, you children are registered, that, that you're moving towards um, what it is that you want to achieve with your family? Um, that, and a part of it is also um, labor activation, so training an adult member of that family or helping them to link to a, to a job. Um, we, we've done a lot of job readiness um, in terms of just, you know, how do you dress, how do you, uh, how do you present mm -hmm. at a work site? Because many people have not gone into the labor force and they need this kind of, of information. So the Boost Plus program is, is moving families towards a higher level of functioning. Not necessarily, we, we wouldn't have time to get them completely out of poverty, but to a better level of functioning. Um, we have the Conscious Youth Development Program, CYDP, under us that works directly in terms of working with, with gangs um, and, and interrupting violence. And the unfortunate fact is that although we've seen a lot of bloodshed, I can tell you that there would be much more if it weren't for interventions of CYDP. They don't, they're not on the, on, on, on the TV, they're not beating yeah. their chest by, by design. Uh, because they have to have that trust, but they work um, in terms of, of you know trying to stave off um, um, violence and, and so forth within within the gangs. We have um, attached social workers to the CYDP, um, and that's the program that I was talking about in terms of working with with these young people. Um, 
mostly children, really, trying to wrap services around those families also. Um, lots of education assistance, uniform, you know, um, school fees, footwear. How do we ensure that these children are um, in school and stay in school? Uh, the, so we've been pushing towards more um, a holistic wraparound services approach um, in anything we do, whenever we come in contact um, with, with children or with families. So if it's domestic violence, if it's child abuse, if it's juvenile justice issues, um, in terms of the young people who have come in conflict with the law, um, you know, try, doing the reforms at, at the youth hostel, um, working, placing a, a social worker within the Wagner's facility to work with those young people. And we've seen a reduction in the recidivism rates. Mm -hmm. um, the aftercare programs, you know, following them once they come out of the hostel or once they come out of Wagner's to try to ensure that they're reintegrated and they don't mm -hmm. offend or they don't go into those gangs. So it's, it's quite a bit of work that we've, do, we've been doing. Um, but the is problem is though? just so, um, the needs are just mm -hmm. uh, incredible. Isn't it challenging though that while yes, you've created all these, all these systems, so to speak, mm -hmm. to be able to help, to be able to change the situation, mm -hmm. that the influence of gangs are so powerful that while yes, you've had all of these measures put in place to try to thwart mm -hmm. young boys, for instance, from becoming involved in gangs, that at some point some of them would slip through the cracks still mm -hmm. and, and still find themselves in a position yeah. where they've become gang members themselves? It will not, never be 100%. And there are mm -hmm. other entities working like Restore Belize and their metamorphosis program mm -hmm. that does a similar thing um, in terms of what we're doing with our social workers and, and working with young boys, especially mm -hmm. mentoring, etc. Um, but this is why this piece is so important mm -hmm. that we're talking about because it's really about the communities in which these children are living. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I see this as, as an exciting prospect to, to really complement mm -hmm. and, and um, shore up mm -hmm. what is being done. You know, it's, it's, you know, if we can try to get the, the basic resources that families need to do right. And I firmly believe, I am a firm believer that if, that if you support families, they want to do right mm -hmm. by their children. Mm -hmm. But many times, they, because of where they live or the situations they find themselves in, the psychology that has developed, um, you know, these, this is the way they have learned to survive. And it's really about supporting them to see a different way of being. Mm -hmm. um, I, there are few families that I've ever come in contact with that, that um, you know, don't want to do right by their children, mm -hmm. you know, um, which, uh, and, uh, whichever way we might see them, they might not conform to what we believe or our values, etc. They have different values and, and maybe just to help them to see a different way. Um, so I think that's why this, this piece is so important mm -hmm. because this is, the, this is the missing link. Mm -hmm. This is about penetrating those communities um, and sustaining what we're trying to do at the formal level. You know, um, there's a thing about um, addressing crime, and which is that the psychology of poverty is being self-sustainable. I mean, there's no, when you're poor, you're not thinking about how to help your neighbor, you're thinking about how to get your meal. And uh, my question in terms of the way that this program can help is how does it complement existing programs? And you were talking about complementing, and I wanted you to go a little bit deeper into that complement. Mm -hmm. um, because it appears that a lot of these safety net programs are targeted to the issue of poverty. So where I'm trying to help you out of poverty. This seems to be a value added sort of approach. You know, you, I heard you speak about possibility of having programs for mentorship, mm -hmm. um, for helping grieving mothers. So we're not trying to help you not to be poor. We're trying to give you empowerment. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to, about how the complement between the existing programs that you just 
spoke about and this how will that work together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Julie shakes her head. Julie shakes her head. I know we're on the same page with yeah. this, these things, so it's just. Yeah, um, I mean, as, as I was listening to, to Julia's description of um, all the human development programs, um, mm -hmm. it also made me <clears throat> appreciate, in fact, how important it is that communities come and meet these programs halfway because they're excellent programs um, and they represent potential. But equally, the community represents enormous untapped potential. If you think about every resource person in the community that could engage and with the talents that they have, with the knowledge that they have of the communities, its needs and how, you know, how things work in that particular community, um, if we were able to get that and lend that insight, lend that, um, that, that energy, that resource to the, the government and other programs who would achieve incredibly, um, incredibly significant impact. Um, and that's, that's why I want, that's the complementarity. I, um, there's a saying in, in my language, I'm from Uganda in East Africa, there's a oh. saying about the night sky, the beauty of the night sky doesn't come from the moon alone, it takes the stars around it mm -hmm. to really... I'll um, borrow that when I'm quoting. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 but I think, I think that, that that's the thing, we've, we've got communities across Belize that have intimate knowledge of the challenges, they, not just the challenges, They're but the who's experts. who mm -hmm. and who's got what, who does what, there are teachers in the community, um, sports coaches, there are um, members of the clergy in the community who are deeply trusted by the families who know um, quite intimately what the struggles of different community members are. There are, there are people in the community, there are students, there are children with innovative ideas um, and dreams and putting that all together, mobilizing those different voices and perspectives so that that, that insight then um, helps to sharpen local government plans, helps to sharpen um, the, the, the quality of the programs, the counseling, the priorities that, are, uh, uh, um, that appear in budgets for the government, that only helps us intensify the impact of the investments from national programs, but it also helps to create, um, to create a, a culture, you said it earlier, of shared accountability for an ownership for the out, the, you know, what we do at the community and the results of that. So what we're trying to do is, in fact, to help build that constellation, to really, um, to really unveil, identify those stars that are willing to be part of that, you know, that, that moonlit and starlit sky here. You, you spoke about budget. Yes. Is it, can I ask what is the budget? Yes. Um, what, what, if I have an idea, mm -hmm. how far can my idea go? What is the financial like the backup, cup? Mm -hmm. the cup? Mm -hmm. So what we've said in um, the call is that we, we're willing to provide up to 30, um, I think it's 35,000 mm -hmm. per um, Belizean grant, dollars. per innovation grant, sorry? 35,000 Belizean dollars. Belizean dollars. Wow. And the issue is this, we're That's not... putting your money where your mouth is. The issue, <laughs> yes, the, the issue, the issue yeah. is that we want um, people to think about ideas that they could support implement and implement over the course of maybe a year mm -hmm. because we feel that that's enough time for us working with these grassroots organizations to start to generate some lessons together. Yeah. But we also are asking for commitment to mm -hmm. stay with the mm -hmm. process and to commit to that shared learning. Um, and this is a first call. We really believe we're going to be able to identify some great ideas through this, this challenge. And the success that we yield through this challenge will hopefully inspire many partners to help us issue a second call down the line. Nice. Um, but, uh, and we're not going to be able to support every community organization that applies, but we're going to look for the very best of them. And therefore, it's really important that the, the different ideas, the different um, people in, in communities come together, the teachers, the clergy, the, um, you know, the, the community mobilized, they do come together, formulate that proposal, and then um, present it to us so that it has the best chance for selection. The yeah. selection will be done not just by UNICEF, but with the, um, the government, with other civil society okay. organizations and, um, and, and other members supporting the work in Belize. Perfect. Ladies, thanks for sharing with us this wonderful idea and this, this plan of action going forward. Uh, I'm certain that our viewers, and I would take this opportunity to appeal to uh, some of the names that we mentioned yes. earlier in the segment, yes. to come forward with your ideas, your applications, 
seek the kind of assistance that is necessary for your program to either get off the ground or for your program to be strengthened through this yeah. initiative. Okay. Once again, thanks ladies. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Okay. We're gonna take- Thanks for having us. We're gonna take a commercial break now. And when we return is to discuss the black medicine, the activation of charcoal. We're gonna have that right away.